I gotta say, you guys sounded awesome today. That was that was great. I'm glad you guys are here today. My name is Jared. If we haven't got a chance to meet each other, hopefully we'll meet before you leave today. Uh, but if you're new here, you want some more information about who we are, or church, anything like that, right in front of you on the back of the chairs are uh, two things, a connection card, which tells us how they get in touch with you, email, uh, phone number, whatever it is. Uh, you can tell us anything you're interested in. Also, there's a prayer request card there. Uh, that we, It is an honor for us to pray for you and for the needs that you have. And so um, we hope that you, you take that us up on that and fill that out. And then later on in our service, we're going to have an offering time where we're going to pass the plates. And you can put uh, those things in there and we'll be in touch with you this week. So I'm so glad you guys are here. Let me pray for us as we get ready to... Uh, do our sermon this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. Everyone gathered here, we pray that you uh, would be honored in everything that uh, is done today. I uh, pray that you um, would get the glory. Um, I pray that as we open your word, that, um, that we would all listen. And I pray that I would speak your truth and your love today, and that we would be hearers and doers of the word. So, Father, we thank you for this chance. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us this morning to think about uh, who our favorite teacher is or was. To think about um, what made them so special. So we've got a few, I know we've got some elementary kids in here who are normally over on the other side of uh, the church during this time. So I'll, I'll, elementary kids, that's who I'm asking. I want you to tell me who your favorite teacher is. Raise your hand. I mean, if nobody raises his hand, I'm going to call him my kid, and he's going to be super embarrassed. So, all right. So, Pat Patterson, who's your favorite teacher? Miss Stratton. All right. It's very good. Is it because she's in the same row, or is it really Miss Stratton? Okay. It's still good. Good. Who else? We had a hand over here somewhere? Maybe not. Okay. Who's your favorite teacher? Miss Tom. All right. So we have teachers. So think about you. Well, who was your favorite teacher growing up? We put this out on social media on, on Thursday. But uh, chances are that they fit probably three categories. First, they know what they're talking about. Right? We can kind of we kind of know when someone doesn't know. And so they knew what their, their subject matter, they knew what they're talking about. But secondly, they're probably able to relate what they know to you in an effective way. Right? Because we've all been in classes where that wasn't the case, right? Where they knew, but you didn't know, and you still don't know, because they weren't able to relate it to you. Uh, I, there was a point where I was, uh, I was asked to be a tutor, and uh, it was for my wife. And uh, she, I was supposed to be this math tutor, and I got to tell you, the rockiest time ever in our relationship was when I was the math tutor, because I knew it, I wasn't very good at relating it. Right? I could look at it and say, the answer is this. And she says, yes, but how is it that? And I couldn't explain it. So it, it wasn't a high mark in our relationship, and we don't speak of it to this day. Right? So that, but, but your favorite teacher, they were able to do that well. They were able to relate what they knew to you in an effective way. But my guess is what made them really special was that they cared about you. There was something more than just what they taught. Uh, I, I know my favorite teacher in school um, is my favorite, not just, um, he, he knew his stuff and everything, but he was my FCA sponsor, and a large part of what got me into ministry was FCA in high school, so he was my FCA sponsor. We suckered him into coaching cross country our senior year when our coach left, and he, he, he did that. But he, we went over to his house and ate dinner with his family. We played video games with him on Friday nights. He was in my wedding. My oldest son, his middle name is Scott because of him. And so we have these relationships uh, with these teachers who, who made a huge impact. Now, not just Christians, but others point towards the teachings of Jesus as like he was a really good teacher. And a lot of it these three things. Jesus knew a lot. I mean, technically, he's all-knowing. So, like, he's, he knows everything about everything. But he was able to relate it to people. He did so in a way called parables, where he would take these stories that uh, were practical stories, but they had this heavenly meaning. And he was able to relay really profound truths in these stories. But, of course, what says Jesus' part is he, was, he cared. 
He loved every single person that he ever met. He, he cared for them. And so what we're going to do this month is we're going to follow Jesus along in a journey uh, that begins in Luke chapter 8, and we're just going to sit and listen to some of his stories and ask the question, what does it mean for us? What, what, does it, what did it mean then? What does it mean today? Luke chapter 8 begins with telling us that Jesus was at this point in his ministry where he was going town to town. And, and so he's getting this gathering. People are following after him. And that's where we pick up in Luke chapter 8 beginning in verse 4. It says, While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. And when he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So Jesus tells a story, and on the, the outset of it, it seems to be about agriculture, which everyone would know in that time, and which kind of relates to where we live today. Uh, I mean, after all, let's just go through these examples that he shows. How many of you have ever worked on a farm, you've ever planted something only to watch birds take away whatever it is you scattered? All right? You've experienced that. How many of you know what it's like to plant something and then find out that all it is is rock and nothing's going to grow? How many of you have planted something to find, to find yourself in like a battle of the century weeds and trying to get those out and maybe losing whatever you planted to the weeds that are around it? We've all done. Now, how many of you have experienced the euphoria of actually finding soil that works? And you're like, yes, finally, I can plant one seed in this corner of my yard, and it will work, right? Uh, we, we know what that's like to, to plant these things. And so Jesus tells the story, and everyone would be like, yeah, I understand that. But Jesus' story was more than just about planting crops, and his disciples knew that. He says in verse 9, it says, his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, and though hearing they may not understand. So the disciples had this huge advantage, and they got the backstage pass, right? So if Jesus gave TED Talks, they actually go backstage and said, so what is it that you just told me about? And, and so they were able to have this conversation. This is what it means. But Jesus says, I teach in parables, not just because the Old Testament says I was, but because I my parables, people are going to see, they're going to hear, they're going to, they're, they're going to be able to wrap their head around, but some of them still might not go along with it. And he says, so let me tell you what this means. And what we're going to find out is Jesus is really talking about three words that start with S. He's talking about seeds, a sower, and soil. And so he starts out here in verse 11. He says, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. So the seed in this story is the word of God. He, he says the seed is, you know what seeds do? Seeds are meant to be put in, planted, taken care of. They, they may sprout, and if they're seed-bearing plants, they, 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 they give more seeds, so more of its kind can, can happen. And, and so he says the, that's what the word of God is like. And, and we see throughout Scripture that's the way it is. Paul tells Timothy, that all scriptures God breathed. It's useful for uh, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So all of scripture, it's, it's from God. And it's supposed to be not just this reference book that we look up on our phones or, or an actual book, it, even though that's great that you have that, it's supposed to be something that's inside of us. Something that, that, that really is, that, that penetrates us and, and leads from us. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So the word of God is here inside of us, and it's, it's, it's kind of like our guidance on everything that we do. And so the 
the imagery Jesus is using is that when, when the, the, the word of God, the seed comes in us, it takes root in us. It, it's firmly in us. We nourish it by, by getting more familiar with it, and then it produces fruit in our life. We're, we're the fruit of the Spirit, you know, the, the joy, peace, patience, kind, all of those. It, it produces it, and hopefully it goes and it, it gets into the lives of other people. So Jesus says this is what it's for. The, the, the word of God is this seed that's supposed to be inside of us. So the, there's the seed, but how does that seed get around? Jesus says, well, there's this farmer. Now, so a lot of you grew up, and, and they didn't use, uh, your translation said the sower. Right? And because I want it to fit with all S's, that's what we're going to say. So it's a sower. The question is, who's the sower? Who's the one going around and planting all of the Word of God everywhere? Well, some might say, well, that's Jesus, because he's the Word made flesh, so he would be the sower who brought everything. Some would say, well, that's, that's preachers and ministers. But, but the truth of the matter is that the sower is anyone who follows Jesus. It is an expectation that if you follow Jesus, you are this seed scatterer that tells other people about him. And Jesus followers, we're all meant to sow the seed of the gospel. Jesus, before he ascended to heaven, he gave this thing called the Great Commission to all of his followers. And they're gathered. There were, there were men, there were women, there were all uh, sorts of different backgrounds, old and young. And he, he gave them this, he says, uh, to go into all the world. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now Jesus didn't put qualifiers on that. He didn't say, hey listen, go to, to like a Bible college and then you go and do this. Or he didn't say, hey you go and you be an elder or a deacon or a, a leader in your women's ministry and, and then you are the one who's supposed to do this. Jesus didn't put a qualifier on it. He says, listen, everyone's supposed to do this. And so not just those who have or influence or who are popular or who have you, you channels with a bunch of subscribers or TikTok famous or anybody has a platform that it, it's not just those who have that everyone if you follow Jesus you are to be his ambassador you're, you're to spread his word there are some things in scripture where it says hey if you're going to preach from the word you need to do this or if you're going to be a leader in church you need to meet this but the majority of the things in scripture that we see we're supposed to do it's all of us. Every single one of us who follow Jesus are supposed to be the supposed to scatter these seeds. And so we are the sower, the seeds of the word of God. And then Jesus goes on to explain the soil that he was talking about. So if, if you go back to uh, verse chapter 6, it says that, uh, verse chapter 6, that's in English. If you go back to 8, chapter 8, verse 6, it says, some fell on rocky ground and birds on birds ate it. So Jesus explains that in verse 12. He says, those along the path are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so they may not believe and be saved. So Jesus says, the soul number one here, it's, it's these people that sadly, no matter how many times they hear it, and no matter how they hear it, they're just not going to believe. And he, he says they, they hear it, but they don't believe. And, and he changes the, the analogy here. He says, so I talked about these birds that came and took the seed away. That, actually, that's, that's the And the devil comes in and prevents it from getting into the soil, and, and it takes it away. And so these are instances where he comes in and, and stops the momentum or, or stops somebody's curiosity about following Jesus and gets rid of it. And, and, and it's just this sad realization that some people are going to hear, but they're just not going to to believe. Jesus goes on to the second soil. This is the, the, the seed that was planted on rocky ground. Verse 13. He says, those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. So, the soil number one, they hear, but they don't believe. Soil number two is they hear, and, they, and they're pumped about it, but then something happens comes in their life, and when it comes, it, it just it knocks them over. And he uses the analogy of these roots just not taking, uh, taking up, and, and so we were kind of familiar with this, right? The storms we've had the last couple of weeks, you, there have been trees down, maybe in your yard, in, in a driveway, something like that, because the, the root system was gone. The way that this is. That's 
says is that there's going to be some people who hear, but and they believe life's going to happen, and it's, it's you're going to fall. He gets on to verse 14. He says, the seed that fell among the thorns stand for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they're choked by life, riches, and pleasures, and they don't mature. The other reality, and that there are people who hear, and they believe, and they make you laugh, and the rock they're, they're going to fall away. Right. Do I need to use a different mic, Dixon? Okay. No one's listening anyway, but just for my... seed among the thorns. And so these people are folks who they hear, they believe, they may last a little bit longer than those who are in the rocky area, but they fall away too. But notice what he says. There, there's something that comes in and distracts them. He says they're choked away by worries or by the pursuit of riches and pleasures, and they don't mature. And so he said that these people will eventually fall away too. But then he gets to verse 15. He says, but... The seed on good soil stands for those with a noble heart, noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. This is like the ideal situation. This is what you want to see. That through all of this, that this is the soil that's receptive. These people don't just become theoretical believers. They become ambassadors. They, they don't just say, yeah, I kind of think that this might be true. They become people who say, you know, I'm going to live out this belief because I believe it's a foundation for me. That They are people that James, who's the half-brother Jesus, would call hearers and doers of the word. That they would, do, they would hear and do it. And, and the hope is that that's, that's who, who we are and, and what we have experienced. And so Jesus has talked about the sower is every Jesus follower. The seed is the word of God, and, and these soils are, are just the it's an oftentimes sad reality that there's just some people who just, they're just not going to see it through. And so based on this, I want to give us three things real quickly for us to remember. The first thing I want us to note is that the sower in the story, he sowed seed everywhere. He sowed it everywhere. I know this is where the agricultural metaphor might break down a little bit because you know where you shouldn't sow seed most likely, but the sower in the story, he, he just sowed the seed because he knew that's what he was supposed to do. He's supposed to scatter the seed no matter where he goes. That's all he, that was his job. And the truth is this morning, we do not pick and choose who we share the word of God with. We don't say, you have to meet my qualifications. You have to look like me or talk like me. The same beliefs as me. You have to go to the same school as me. You can't have this in your past. You can't have wronged me. We, we don't say, you have to meet my qualifications. We just scatter the seed. No matter where we go, no matter who we are around, we are people who share the love of Jesus and the message of Jesus everywhere. We do not spre stop spreading the seed. We scatter it everywhere. And this is why. The second point is this. Every single one of the soils, though they ended up with different results, every single one of them heard the word. Even that first soil where it says that the birds came and they took the seed away, you know what happened? It says they heard and then before they could believe it went away. All of these soils heard. That means that everyone that we talk to, everyone that we message, they hear what we're saying. And as seed scatterers, we need to go and tell people because at least they hear it. it, it some might not believe, some might not, some might not retain, some might not persevere, but, but they all hear it. 
Romans chapter 10 says, How then can they call on the one they've not believed in? And how can they believe in the one in whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet who bring good news. Paul says, hey, here's the reality. People aren't going to believe in something they've never heard about. People aren't going to follow someone that they've never heard about. So someone's got to tell them. And, and those who are, of us who are Jesus followers, that's us. We're the ones who have to go and tell people so that they hear and hopefully so that they believe. There's a, an example of this in Acts chapter 8. There's a man named Philip who was a Jesus follower, and he, he goes uh, along the way, and the Holy Spirit inside of him says, go up to that chariot. And he goes up to this chariot, and there's a man from Ethiopia in there, and he hears him reading from Isaiah. And the man says, or Philip asks the man, hey, do you understand what you're reading? And the man says, no, I have no idea what this is. And the part of Isaiah is talking about the suffering servant who was Jesus. And Philip said, I know exactly who that's talking about. And by the end of it, this man from Ethiopia was baptized, and he becomes someone who takes the message of Jesus back home with him. But just imagine if Philip just decided not to listen that day. I'm not, I don't feel like it. This per, I don't know this person. I, I'm not going to go. What if he had not done Well, the ramifications is there could have been a lot of people who never heard the message of Jesus because he chose not to follow God's prophecy. But we are seed scatterers everywhere we go because the word is always heard. Right? It's always heard. The reality we have to, and this is, this is really hard for us to, to wrestle with, the reality is everyone on this earth We'll go to heaven or we'll go to hell for all of eternity. And so we're sent to spread the message of Jesus to as many people as possible while we're here. So we are all called. We're, we're, we're to scatter the seed everywhere we go. We are to do this so because the word's always heard. But then there's a third truth I want you to understand this morning, and that is we are not responsible for the response of others to the word of God. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus never chastised the sower because the soil didn't do what, it, what he had hoped. It wasn't the sower's fault that the soil didn't take it or that it got choked out. So often our hesitation is, well, if I go and tell somebody this, then they're going to they're gonna say this about me, or it's going to affect this relationship, or, or, or what they're, they're just not going to believe, so why even bother? And, and the reality is we... We're not responsible for whether they believe or not. We're responsible for whether we give them a chance. We're responsible for spreading that. If, like, conversion rates and was the, the hallmark and the, the measuring sticks for Christians, friends, Jesus wouldn't even have been good at this. They killed him when he spread the word of God. That's not what's, what it's about is doing it. It's getting out there and spreading the message of Jesus to everyone that we meet. I just want you to understand, like, grasp this this morning. You could be the person that starts the conversation or starts someone towards the path to be with Jesus forever. That could be you. God wants to use you. And how many times have we missed that opportunity because we were having a bad day, because they're weird, or because I don't feel like it? You could be the one that got it. You know, that's how their story is going to start. You, but we have to be willing to do that. 1 Peter 3, verse 15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Peter says, at all times, you just be ready. Be ready to tell people. Now, look what Peter doesn't say. He says, be ready to quote the entire Bible because you have to. He doesn't say, hey, be ready to defend every theological question that you have. He says, just be ready to tell people the hope that you have. Now, we should keep exploring all those other things, but tell people about Jesus. Tell people about the hope you have. And so my challenge for us this morning is to be seed scatterers everywhere you go. As you leave this place today in your car ride home, be seed scatterers. When you go home, 
BC scatters, when you go to school, in a locker room, on your social media accounts, be seed scatterers. Tell people about Jesus. Because we don't know, but perhaps the seed will land on fertile soil. And someone's life, somebody's eternity is changed because we decided to tell them about Jesus. And so here this morning, understand this is what Jesus is trying to get us to understand. We have to see, to sow the seed everywhere we go. To give as many people as a chance as possible. To be in a relationship with the one who loves them, who created them, and who wants to redeem them and be with them forever. Let's pray. Father, thank you for um, your reminder this morning that we are called to to share with everyone this, this message that we who are sinners and broken needed a Savior, and the God whose heart we broke sent his Son to be our sacrifice. There's people in our homes who need to hear that, in our locker rooms, our schools. There's people that at the water cooler at work or who follow us on social media who need to hear that. So, Father, send us out this morning as seed scatterers. Help us to be reminded, those of us who know you, Father, who follow you, that someone was that for us. Someone chose to tell us about you. And now our eternity has changed because of what they did. So let us be that in other people's lives, Father. So Father, move in our hearts today. Show us those who need to hear your word. And may we carry out everything you call us to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, maybe there's somebody that has been working on you, talking to you 